Hey you guys, it's Moonlander, and uh, today I wanted to make a video on five horror movie suggestions that you could watch on uh, Netflix. And uh, these are five movies of the horror genre that I think are worth watching. And, you know, being a movie geek that always looks at horror first when you're trying to find a movie to watch... Um, I know how hard it is to find a halfway decent horror movie because as much as I like horror, I'd say like 75% of the horror I watch is complete garbage. But anyway, it makes you appreciate the good ones more. And it even makes you like ones that, you know, as far as movies, you know, they're, they're okay, but they're not like great movies. But you still like them anyway. But anyway, so uh, one of the movies on this list is going to be The Houses That October Built. And uh, this is a found footage movie. And I know a lot of people don't like found footage, but I'm a fan. And I've tried watching so many different found footage movies. My wife pretty much gives me a dirty look when I suggest anyone. <laughs> to watch she's i think she's sick of them but anyway um it follows a group of people that are traveling across the country in an rv and they're stopping at uh haunted houses and they're trying to find like the best haunted house basically tell me about yourself and what are we doing you want my name my name is zach You've known me for 20 years, Mikey. I rented an RV. I want to find the most extreme haunted house in the world. And uh, it's a really cool premise for a movie, and it's really exciting and interesting. And each one they go to, it's fun because you get to see, like, a different type of haunted house. And they become, like, increasingly more thrilling as they go. What is an extreme haunt? I don't understand how far, like, how far they, you really can go on without hurting somebody. And eventually they start to notice like the same people as they cross the country in the same mass. And uh, basically, you know, they realize that these people are stalking them and they end up finally finding a terrorizing experience and they realize that they don't really want one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's not the best movie, and like I said, it's found footage, so if you hate found footage, you might not like it, but uh, if you have an open mind or, you know, like some found footage, I do suggest it. And it only has a 5.1 IMDb rating, but I've learned over the years that that's actually pretty decent for a horror movie. Like, if it's over 5... You know, no, it's going to be all right. <laughs> and I've watched it a couple times. So, I mean, if that tells you anything, I thought it was worth watching more than once. And I try to suggest it to people, you know. Dress, though. <laughs> this is where they said to go. Is that the girl from the haunt? She didn't really say anything. Something happened to your car? But okay, and then another one on the list is going to be called uh, The Last Shift. And this is a great one. It's about a rookie cop whose first duty as a cop is to man a desk of a closing police station. And that's why it's called The Last Shift. Because she's like doing the last shift of this police station. Because they're moving to a new building. You are the lucky rookie to work the very last shift in this mausoleum. All 911 calls have been rerouted to the new station, so it should be quiet. And, of course, it takes place at night, and she's alone there. Like, she's just supposed to answer the phone and transfer calls. So it's like, it may not seem that realistic, but... The actress they got to play the rookie cop like does such a good job that she helps pull the movie off. And you actually believe that she is a rookie cop and that she 
wanted to be a cop so she wants to take her job seriously and it makes the movie an even more fun experience when you actually believe in the character Sanford Police Department help me I'm trapped I think they might all be dead but anyway, as the night goes on, a story unravels about how these cult members of like a Manson-style kind of cult uh, committed suicide in the jail at the police station, and now they haunt it. This is another one that I've watched multiple times, and I suggest it to people, and that's why it's on this list. Anybody in here? So, you know, the, the movie's basically about this woman dealing with the situation and also trying to do her job and not be laughed at because she's a rookie cop. So, it's really a fun one. And, yeah, you should watch it. What I do. <laughs> okay, and then the next one is going to be The Invitation. And this movie I highly recommend. It's one of the better movies I've seen like in the last year or so. Um, it's great. <laughs> And uh, the in the I was reading about it on IMDb for any kind of information I could include about it in this video. And in the trivia, it says that the director Karen Kusama and the writers uh, had complete control over the movie. And I feel like this has a good deal to do with how good a movie is because when the studio gets involved and you know they want the story to be a certain way because they think it'll help make more money or whatever it kind of ruins it and it kind of makes movies like an empty experience like i like seeing them where the director and writers get to say how the movie's gonna be this thing is so official maybe they're overcompensated it's kind of hard to call everybody up out of the blue after two years I'm so glad you're here. We've got a lot to talk about. It's about a couple going to a dinner party being held by the boyfriend's ex-wife, who has he has not heard from her in several years. Yeah, the boyfriend was married to this woman, and they had a child, and the child dies. They split up, and she disappears for several years, and she returns with a new man, and she invites him and... His girlfriend and their old friends all over for like a dinner party. Bars on the windows and no? Security. It's safer. You've been acting so suspicious of our hospitality. And things become very strange and the boyfriend really seems to be the only person that takes notice of it. Everybody thinks he's like being crazy but... You see it through his eyes, and things are strange. Has he been like this a lot? So agitated? How has he been handling things? He can be so and basically, it, as the mo uh, movie goes on, you start to wonder if everybody's going to notice or if he's just being crazy. What is happening? Okay, and then the next movie is called Trash Fire, and it stars Adrian Grenier from Entourage, and I didn't realize it was him until about, like, halfway through the movie, and I think it was because his character was so well done in this Trash Fire movie, I just didn't even think of this guy in another role and i kind of felt silly after i realized it was him i was like geez dear god thank you for this time with my lovely sister and her off again on again boyfriend you really should look into making an honest woman out of her 
I'm not taking relationship advice from a beige earthworm. <laughs> but anyway, it's about a couple that are struggling to keep together due to his character being such a gigantic asshole who has seizures and is also bulimic. <laughs> They decide to keep together after the girlfriend reveals she is pregnant and he insists that they keep the baby and work on their relationship. And she agrees to do this as long as he can show goodwill by reuniting with his family, which is only his grandma and his sister. And his sister has 80% burns over her body and from a fire that he feels responsible for. So it's like a real awkward situation. You kind of understand why he's like kind of kept away from these people, you know. But anyway, so they I traveled to the grandma's house and the sister's living with the grandma. And uh, you're introduced into one of the most wicked portrayals of an old woman that you know, I've ever seen in a movie. It's really good. It's well done. I'm a worth pearl. She takes her meals in her room. Why is that? Because I find it hard to hold my food down while looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, basically, this movie could be called a comedy as well because uh, there's quite a few laugh-out-loud moments because of the dialogue, it's just really funny. And, uh, I mean, with the grandma being so awful and that Adrian's character being such an asshole, it's just hilarious. But anyway, it's still a horror movie in my opinion, but some might disagree. Sit back, relax, and watch a true vessel of God do his work. She's a bad girl. She's a very bad girl. Okay, and then the last one I wanted to put on this list is We're Still Here. And uh, this is a really fun horror movie. It's about a couple that moved to a small town in New England for a new start after their son dies. And the town is weird. Like, the people in the town are weird. They soon realize. And... They also discover that their house might be haunted as well. But I really can feel something here, Paul. So what are we gonna do about it? So they invite like their hippie friends over who are into investigating the paranormal. They invite them over for a weekend and a crazy and violent story unravels. What if Jacob and May came up for the weekend? She told me once that people pay her to do seances. This house has an energy all its own. We don't need to find the darkness here, Paul. It's everywhere. I mean, this movie has awesome gore and it's kind of scary. Like, I I remember my, when my dad visited, I had him watch it and he told me he thought it was scary. <laughs> So anyway, uh, it's definitely probably the most traditional horror movie on this list. So if you don't really like my other suggestions and you haven't seen this one, at least, you know, try it maybe. <laughs> 30 years or so, the goddamn place just wakes up and it demands new blood. But, uh... All right, you guys, uh, please tell me what you think below. And if you have any suggestions on movies that you can find on Netflix that are good for horror movies, you know, please comment and tell me. Or if you don't like, if you saw any of these movies and didn't like them, I mean, I'd like to talk about it. So, all right, you guys, I'll see you on the next video.